Welcome, welcome, welcome. I said that three times. Now, okay, I don't know uh, what this is going to be about. And mind my creaky chair, because that's what I'm sitting in right now. But uh, when I was making, like, because I'm planning on uh, posting this to Spotify. So uh, when I made the app or whatever you call it um, to to record it, I just called this the Slithy Toves podcast. And um, that's based on um, the poem Jabberwocky. I forget who it's from. Uh, if you know, please uh, comment. Well, I guess, does Spotify do comments? I don't know. Nonetheless... We are here. Um, I had this idea. I actually uh, filmed a, an episode already. Um, I filmed it in my shed at like 12 o'clock at night because um, I just uh, wanted somewhere for for uh, both for silence and for, you know, the darkness of contemplation. I feel like a lot of times it's better to just um, uh, speak in the dark, you know, what have you. Um but that being said, uh, uh, what was I saying? Uh, you know, I, I just had an idea of, about this. Uh, uh, I, I've, I've been thinking about just making some sort of a, uh, a log about, uh, you know, my own thoughts, maybe like a self journal type deal, but mainly just to talk, to talk to myself and maybe there's someone out there, uh, listening to me, um, or maybe someone that might want to come on to the the podcast, if you will. But yeah, um, so I mean, really, I don't know what this is going to be about. Usually it's better to speak with someone so you can always kind of just rebound off of it. But I guess um, right now it's going to have to be a train of thought. Um, so I have a couple of notes listed from uh, the episode before. Um, I tried to kind of just talk about... You know, what, uh, how do you say, where, where, where am I coming from when I'm doing this? So, um, I'm just a kind of, well, I, I'm just a dude. Um, I'm just living my life, but, um, I have a couple of interests, um, mainly in music. I love music. I love jazz. Jazz is beautiful. But, um, uh. I also am very interested in uh, other types of visual art. Um, right now, I'm standing around my um, my uh, uh, how do you say my my own uh, visual art workspace. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, I like I, I like um, learning about um, different ways of knowledge or whatever. If you want to get into it, I'm I'm. Uh, I mean, it kind of. I feel like when when you say that you're interested in philosophy, it it all almost automatically sounds like egotistical or like you come off like, oh yeah, I'm a philosopher. Um, but uh, I guess if you want to call it that, yes, I'm interested in that media theory, uh, that kind of stuff. I'm I'll, I'm interested in history. The thing is, I don't like. I I, I just can never be interested in it when it's being taught to me in class but you know I, I like learning about uh the history of rome and stuff even though still i don't know a lot about it so uh i just overall surmise that i'm a i uh i'm curious in a couple different ways and hopefully that shines through and it'll allow me to um, have some better conversations uh moving forward with this uh because uh I feel that with these kinds of things, not only is it um, just a way to speak or profess myself and my thoughts, but as well to gain more insights. And it's just, I mean, I heard somewhere um, from Jordan Peterson, a controversial figure, um, that, uh, you know, when you speak, when he does lectures, when, when you just speak things out, you um, are able to provide structure to thought and make them more articulate. So there's that. And so... We'll just jump right into it. I mean, uh, I was talking about Jordan Peterson in the early, uh, other podcast episode. And, um, I mean, he's a controversial figure. Uh, most definitely, um, he's very, uh, how do you say, he is very straightforward with his, his, his 
or not very straightforward, I should say, very, very, uh, uh, brunt, uh, very, uh, frank about his thought, um, to the extent where, I mean, you know, some people really dislike the things that he says, and I mean, you can take that for, for what it is, he has some problems with, um, uh, maybe not transsexuality in its nature, but, uh, you know, people who, uh, how do you say, um, in his words, kind of idealize it. So he was kind of making a fuss about, <sighs> so this is one thing. I don't know modern culture very well. So there is this one guy in the media here. I'll pull it up. I got a, I got a, I got technology around me. Just wait. All right. So it was Elliot Page. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, I mean, there was kind of that controversy controversy about it. He's kind of faded a little bit into the the background, but nonetheless, uh, you know, there's some... I guess there's probably some uh, critical things about everyone. I guess not everyone holds the very truth of the matter. Uh, but that being said, um, it goes for me as well. Some things that I say I feel can be offensive in their nature. Um, I feel that... You know, take take everything with an open mind, not get so so quickly reactant about it. But um, also, you know, you should just uh, I, I I'm I'm claiming straightforwardly that uh, I don't I don't have the keys to truth. Um, foremostly, I am uh, like I said, a person who's curious about things. I don't, um, you know, I profess ideas. I don't claim to profess facts. So that's one thing straight out of the gate, um, is that, uh, yeah, I mean, just like, just like everyone else, I'm flawed and I don't mean to be, uh, I, I like to take the stance, uh, that maybe Joe Rogan would, you know, say, or, you know, a couple of other people's Cat Williams, that I'm a comedian. I'm not, you know, don't, don't, I, I, I would rather, you know, maybe say something that people consider truth, uh, for laughs than um, to scare them or frighten them. And some things I say w are intentionally um, uh, not facts. Um, but that being said, um, let's go on to another thing. So, uh, uh, before me, in our school at least, there was a very, very lovely podcast that was going on. I mean, actually, I, I believe it only had four episodes. I was kind of looking back on it with a fond memory. Um, a shout out and a lament for Hello, Mrs. Larson. A beautiful little podcast, very quaint. Um, uh, it had a couple of good episodes to it. And I feel that um, this kind of takes or will take uh, kind of the same turn. It's just a random assembly of things I... Um, Hello, Mrs. Larson was, you know, shout out to Trelana and Allie because uh, they, you know, they did it right. It, it was a good little deal while it lasted. Unfortunately, the opinions of Miss Larson have not uh, lingered, how should you say? And, um, well, we, we've moved on from her. Uh, I don't know where she is. I think she got, I don't know. I don't want to spread rumors. So, um, yeah, there's that. Um, I, uh... Another thing I want to say is that um, uh, I, I'm kind of interested in not only um, history and I guess you should, I could say philosophy, but also religion. Um, you know, I, I don't know exactly what I am as far as religion goes, um, but uh, I, I guess uh, uh, a good statement would be that I'm invested in uh, Huxley's perennial philosophy. I don't know. I, I actually, I don't think he was the one to originate it, that term, but, um, just, uh, you know, an interest in the under underlying, uh, how, how should you say underlying thoughts, um, opinions of each religion, you know, kind of all meshed together. So, um, that would be kind of the noose or the grunt, um, in Meister Eckhart's terms, the, the the thing beyond it all which has no name which is beyond even the godhead itself 
even though maybe we can't um, access that. Nonetheless, that's another interest that will be continued going on. Um, hopefully I can get a lot more um, educated people to talk about this with me because it's... I, I'm I'm interested in all this stuff, this metaphysical stuff, which nowadays seems to be um, kind of thrown into the, the the sidelines as far as that's concerned. But I guess we're moving on to uh, bigger, greater technological things, which brings me to my next thing, um, AI. <laughs> this is quite a an episode already. We've jumped from here to there to there to there, but um, I guess that's kind of the nature of my thought. So AI. That's one thing I'm, uh, you know, I've not looked into it as much as I should, but, uh, yeah, that's just, uh, AI is one thing that I am kind of interested in as far as what the hell it means, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what does it mean for the human race? What does it mean for consciousness? Uh, you know, is it going to be something which will, you know, do our dishes for us and take out the trash while we can just sit on our couch? Do we even want that? Um, that's something that, um, I'm interested in. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, all of these things kind of at, at some point mesh together. Um, I think it's, I think that life in some sense, I mean, life is the answer to the question of life. But, um, uh, nonetheless, we're moving on. This is, this is quite the speed, um. I I just think first and foremost um I'm just reading off a couple bullet points. So really it's just you know I had more thought um about them uh but uh but kind of I'm, I'm kind of just flying through everything for now. Um we can get back to it all in I guess some future episodes. So just to start off um today is National Spinach Day. Um, it, this, this is the holiday, what is the day today? Um, let me see here. It's, uh, come on now. It's the 26th of March. Yes, sir. So natural, national spinach day. Uh, shout out to my boy Popeye. Um, I loved watching his cartoons when he was, when I was younger. Um, just a beautiful soul, really. He is the best sailor in all the seas. He is what he is, and that's all that he is, for sure. And don't mind me, I'm just um, sipping on some good uh, coffee right now. I love coffee. Uh, Folger House. No, it's Coffee House, that's where it is. That's my coffee of choice. Only because my parents make it. <clears throat> so, I guess uh, just another thing is... What was my inspiration for the podcast? Well, I should say I'm very interested in, um, well, I shouldn't say very interested in. I've always found people like Dope as Yola very interesting, very funny, very entertaining people. Um, Dope as Yola, uh, if you don't know, he's a very famous YouTuber. Um... But he also has his own podcast, of course, Dope as Usual. Um, and I feel like just the main things that come from that podcast would be, you know, just it would be honesty or just kind of just authenticity. And, you know, just he, he does what he wants. He, he explores places which... He desires to explore, not with the intent of being necessarily entertaining. Um, I feel that this is mostly uh, my goal. I kind of want for the first podcast to be a little entertaining. I'm kind of excited for people to come on because then it's not just, you know, me having to deal with this. And obviously I'll get better at it um, once we uh, move forward Uh so, shall you say, or whatever the, the term is. Nonetheless, I'm just a dude. I just wish to, you know, I had this idea, you know, I, I thought, eh, I mean, we'll, we'll try it out. Um, so I guess just reeling you in on my life, um, we just got back from a Florida trip. Our, uh, uh, music department went down to Florida, to Disneyland, 
to play some uh, sweet, sweet jazz. And, um, well, we also danced a little bit down there. Shout out to my boy, Mr. Moeller. Um, uh, his last trip, he was getting a little emotional. Uh, Mans was crying a little bit. But it's all right, because guess what? He's like, what? I don't, I don't even know his age. Probably like 65 years old. He's getting on in age. It's his last year, and, you know, hopefully he's ending it off strong. That's all you can uh, hope for, for these kind of things that... He's satisfied with his last year. And I think he is. Nonetheless, we went down to Florida. Uh, Disneyland was fine, I guess. I'm not necessarily... I mean, I used to be much more, but I'm not necessarily one for rides anymore. Not because I can't handle them, but, but... But mainly because I was there on business. You know what I'm saying? I I, I needed... I, I wanted to play. And that leads me to my next thing is that... Um, uh, okay... First of all, I played the drum set for jazz, you know, give or take how good I am. Um, I just, you know, it's that's that's what I was there in Florida for. I'm in a jazz, uh, like it's an honored jazz band. So I have to do that in like, what, uh, less than two weeks. It's coming um, the 6th of April is when I go down there. And hopefully we can play some some more sweet, sweet jazz. You know what I'm saying? Um yeah, that's that's one thing. I mean, I guess I, w I would characterize myself mainly as a a creator. Um, you know, as much as I like to say that I read or that I um, uh, consume, uh, mostly I wish to um, create. And, and um, you know, just through various forms, you know, here and there, a little um, ink drawing... Um, here and there, some sweet, sweet jazz, or some maybe some slow blues on the guitar. You know, all these things um, just just come together. Um, and uh, I don't know. Looking forward to the future, I don't necessarily know exactly what I'm gonna do as far as um, college. Um, I just wanna you know have a good time, I guess, for mostly, but you know, to be productive in that time. So, yeah, let's see here. I guess. Um, obviously one of my other inspirations for, um, uh, for, uh, the podcast is the formidable Joe Rogan. Um, so, uh, you know, if everyone knows who Joe Rogan is, uh, again, he himself is quite controversial. It seems like he, like, I mean, just like the, the show South Park, he's kind of risen above, uh, how should you say, um, the cancel culture instinct of you know everyone getting offended and eventually just being thrown off i think that's a dying thing especially cancer culture cancel culture not cancer culture cancer is still a thing unfortunately um there's some theories about uh big pharma holding all the fucking uh uh how should you say holding all the uh um cures to cancer behind some 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 uh uh, some, some, the, what I'm trying to say is that there are some theories about, uh, big pharma pushing medicine, even though they have the cure for cancer. I'm not going to get into that. I don't personally, uh, again, I don't, I don't necessarily believe that to be the case. Um, uh, although I, I think apparently there are some, some quite promising, uh, medications that are coming out, um, that are shown to, um, uh, be way more productive in curing cancer. Again, that's not uh, something that I'm way too specialized in. Uh, but then again, okay, going back to Joe Rogan. Um, he's a controversial figure. He talks about a lot of stuff. And that's kind of what I aim to be, is a, a very all-around kind of guy. You can't pin him on a certain thing. I mean, he's interested in jujitsu and um, uh, I guess you should say the the history of the theory of the Great Floods. Um, you know, he's a fan of Graham Hancock, you know, just various, I mean, conspiracy, I mean, obviously he's kind of interested in the, uh, religious landscape, he's talked with Jordan Peterson, he's a very all-around guy, and that's what I aim to be, um, whether or not you like him, uh, or not, you know, I guess, um, doesn't matter to me, he's, he seems a cool guy to me, um, but that being said, uh, what else should I really say? I mean, I I, I talked about uh, AI. Well, 
Okay, let's go back into AI a little bit. So one of my main concerns, along with, you know, many other people, is not the fact that, uh, that you know, AI might overthrow us and take us over. You know, I mean, again, we're shooting in the dark here. We don't really know exactly what's going to happen. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think one of the main concerns is that we will use AI against ourselves. Um, and that seems, you know, it seems that the greatest evil in the world is, is mankind itself. And, you know, that is one scary thing. AI is an, pursuing an exponential growth upwards, and it's it's kind of crazy. Um, you know, but that being said, I feel like there's also uh, what people have called the meta-crisis. Um, basically where, um, you know, we, we've gotten to a point of, uh, I mean, you can't really, again, you, you can't uh, pin a nail on a certain topic of this broad ranging subject, but, you know, it's just the fact that in pursuing our, um, our desire for technical, um, technological improvement and um, by pursuing, uh, you know, a, a clearer um, mind with uh, reason and rationality. Um, you know, we have kind of drifted away from from the religious aspect, and it's not to say that um, we will ever be able to um, gain that, what we once had as far as um, the in broad interest in religion. But, you know, uh, people like Ian McGilchrist have said that it... it kind of boils down to uh, kind of a division between the right brain and the left brain. Um, the right brain being some kind of uh, this abstracting, um, how, how should you say, it tries to um, get a broad picture of things without um, any aims for specificity. It tries to take uh, an approach that's beyond itself um, and it's characterized mostly with religious experience. That's not to say that that's all that it does. But um, his argument is that um, in today's day and age, we're slowly growing farther and farther away from um, the religious experience. And what, what does that mean? Um, it's that the left brain, which is some... Uh, but that's what we call our reason, or well, no, I wouldn't say that. I would say the left brain is associated more with creativity. Um, it's uh, it's it what it what it does is um, it 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 it's the side of the brain which kind of assumes and creates thought, but it argues for itself. So, um, uh, I guess I should say like it it's the part of your brain which speaks it, i mean it, it controls language but um it it always you know has a thought for itself it doesn't find the answer per se but it finds the answer which is most useful to itself and what happens there is that uh uh you know eventually if that does happen to take over Ian McGilchrist called it the master and the emissary the master being the right brain the emissary being the left brain um and he said if that kind of takes over, we will have uh, lost the ability not only to speak with other people, but to find any, uh, I guess you should say, reason uh, beyond uh, reason, reason beyond rationality, I guess. I mean, it's very good, scientifically speaking, it's very analytical. Um, it can, you know, scour looking for the facts and it can find valid facts. But um, what what happens is again, it's usually oriented towards itself. Um, you know, he talked about the the uh, what happens if the right brain is um, damaged compared to the left brain being damaged. While one is um, uh, able to speak when the right brain is damaged, um, so you know it's it's much worse to be damaged in the the right hemisphere than the left. Even though in the, the the right again, if if you have the right hemisphere, um, that you know the right hemisphere is healthy, and the left hemisphere is uh, 
damaged, you can't talk. Nonetheless, you're still able to do um, a broad amount of functions relatively effectually. What am I trying to say with the, all this? Again, I'm interested in this thought. It's never always fully thought out. There's another part of the meta crisis which is um, designated to what um, Jacques Ellul and um, Ted Kaczynski would call techni, and the fact that um, uh, and that kind of coincides with the left brain, right brain, um, that uh, now we've developed this outward kind of spirit of technological adv- advancement that has um, caused us to, I mean, it's it's um, it's by its course natural like it's 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 in its nature to enslave us in some sense and i've not fully worked that out i've not fully thought that out um but uh i I would imagine that what they're trying to say is that eventually technological advancement which is something which uh i guess kind of coincides with game theory and the 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 thought that um you know this person is doing this uh, and so I should do this in order that I'm prepared for this other person because in all reality, it's just a matter of who overthrows what person and that that thought that um, is successful in overthrowing the other person is the thought which is maintained. So, you know, over that course, it just develops a gradual kind of, um, you know, that's the the philosophy is always the philosophy of the winner. Um, what I'm trying to say with that is, uh, you know, with the pursuit of technology, it kind of consumes, uh, it, it eventually consumes everything, and um, the pursuit of technology becomes so embedded in the the natural thought of the human mind um, that uh, I guess in, in some way you're just possessed into um, helplessly, mindlessly, advancing technology not only that but eventually once everything is consumed you are only surrounded and consumed yourself by technology again i'd love to have some other fellow philosophers on this um topic because again i don't i don't really have a full picture here of what 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 i'm I'm saying um i should say uh just another thought which is just in the back of my mind uh graduation yeah that's right i'm a senior kind of worrying about it just a little bit um not necessarily because i don't think i will graduate but uh because because you know i just at the start of the year i just wanted everything to be going along uh, um you know, just to be the best that it can. Obviously, it can never be the best that it could be. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, I, you know, I feel like just when, when I graduate, it'll all, there will always be that, just that element of disappointment. I just never really wanted it to be just one of those years where, oh, yeah, let's, let's go party, let's do all this stuff. I just wanted it to be a year to grow. And, you know... Hopefully that's that's coming along. Hopefully that's down the pipe. But uh uh yeah, just another fear is, you know, having to get into the real world obviously and you know, some people say it's not as bad as it really seems and to that I'd, I probably would agree. I don't think that I have much of a problem going on beyond it, but nonetheless I guess we should say that there's two different sides. I mean, the side that wants to move onward and just go to college and then there's a side which wants to stay in this perpetual kind of you know it's a a languid kind of year you know as much as I do feel I'm I'm doing a lot of productive stuff um, just the nature of being able to do all that productive stuff without the the uh, terrors of work and stuff but um, yeah just a crazy time a crazy time that we live in in general isn't it i mean you got all these new um all these new you know trends that are going on trends seem to be going faster and faster remember the visco era oh my god like what 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 oh my god um 
And then they, you know, that's one thing. I mean, they were, they had the, what was it even? It was the uh, Hydro Flask. And now that's been recreated by the Yeti. Or no, it's not the Yeti, but it's the um, Stanley mug, Stanley cup, whatever. And now people are dying of lead poisoning from that. <laughs> you know, s -s -s slay, right? Anyways, um, yeah, just shout out to Stanley Cup for having lead in the bottom of their cups. That's kind of funny. But, I mean, what, what are you going to do? You got to insulate it somehow. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I'm very, you know, I, I really hope I can get a lot of, you know, some, some people on here. Kind of spice things up. Um, sometimes I feel myself being a little too stern for other eyes to be interested um, so, you know, just, just get that, uh, that good old banter going back and forth and, you know, it'll be a good time. I'm thinking about getting my brother on if he would, uh, so desire to be on here if he said he would. Um, but, uh, yeah, just, just a day in the life, I guess. Uh, today we had school off. Um, we had school off yes yesterday, but, um, it's it, today isn't an e-learning day like it was yesterday. So this is kind of just a chill day. You know, sit around and do stuff. Um, you know, think about things, I guess. One of the recent things that I've been looking into was, like I said, the or maybe I didn't say it, but um, the history of the Roman Empire. Um, I don't know anything about the Roman Empire, so I guess that's why I want to learn, but, um, you know, just an interesting time, you know, all of them, you know, t considering that our country is only 200 years old, and we say that a lot of stuff has happened in that time, man, I mean, how long did the, the Romans, the Romans were around for, like, probably 600 plus years, right? It wasn't Rome, Ro yeah, because I know that there were, like, countless, countless civil wars that were going back and forth. Again, I'm not a historian. Hopefully in college I'll be able to clear all that stuff up, but, you know, it went from peace immediately into chaos and war, from religiosity to savagery and barbarism, all of that good stuff. And, you know, before that there were the Greeks with the Eleusinian mystery, mis uh, mysteries, the the cults of Dionysus and Bacchus, which eventually formed into the Orphic cult. Nonetheless, yeah, that's one, I mean, kind of all those things I've been looking at in, in recently. Oh, that's the thing, I mean, in Florida, I spent a lot of time just listening to stuff. Um, I'm, I guess I should say, I'm also kind of interested in, uh, I guess, what would you say, the occult? And, uh, you know, one of the misinterpretations of the occult is that it's a, you know, it's like black magic. Oh, you're like, a, you're a witch or a wizard trying to do, like, curse evil, curse people with, like, hexes and spells and stuff. And really just, I mean, I, that's, I guess that's incorporated in it, but um, there's a way broader, like, I guess you could say the occult has existed ever since, and maybe this is not surprising, but ever since, you know, the dawn in, the dawn of, the you know, philosophy and religion, um, there's always, I guess they say one thing about um, thought is that there's the dualities, that there's the, the shadow of thought, which is, which is not really mainstream. And then there's the, uh, the mainstream, which, you know, people just call religion. And a lot of it ties together very harmoniously, some maybe not, um, uh, you know, what I'm saying is that um, I guess we could start with Christianity. Um, there are a bunch of different um, uh, occult um, uh, underground uh, modes of thought. Um, one would be uh, hermetic alchemy. Uh, another would be, well, I mean, I guess, you know, alchemy, hermetic alchemy, uh, the broader source of Gnosticism that you have groups like um, the Freemasons, the Rosicrucians, the Valentinians, all those people were kind of interested in this, in a broader aspect of religion, uh, mainly in, I don't know, how, how do you characterize the difference between these these things and, and um, you know, just regular Christianity? Um, I, I would say, 
alchemy in specific, it kind of comes at the intersection. What they say is the way to get um, inner gold is by combining art and it was it was art and um the soul i believe i don't know nonetheless um they were very interested and very learned in old mystery symbols all of that stuff which is you know it's crazy just number one to think that uh that a society like the freemasons or even the knights templar were societies that were based in some way in Egypt all the way back then it's like there have been you know alchemy is thought to have come from the word kemet uh, which means um, rich soil and the thought there is that I mean it goes into a, a broad variety of thought a broad variety of thought which is um, you know I don't fully know myself um, one of the famous people to um, popularize it is Jung who was um, essentially this um, uh, psychoanalyst who was a student of Freud, um, and he he had a lot of appreciation of alchemy and um, uh, uh, just a lot of the old wisdom of the past. It seems that, especially nowadays, um, I don't know, it just seems like we don't know a lot. Maybe we always never really knew a lot about other civilizations but it's just always so interesting to look into the past both to see how similar we are to it and to see how far we've grown you know what i'm saying but anyway um back to alchemy um kemet which means rich soil the fact that um uh it could also you know yeah i think it also means dark soil um and that would be the unconscious um which is dark um uh, the, the the dark um you know you would penetrate into the dark and out of it would grow um some sort of a, a rich flowering plant um and maybe maybe i don't have that right i don't know nonetheless you know all these beautiful things like i said already just you know a second ago uh, so interesting to learn about these old things and as well so interesting uh, to learn about new things um, I just got back from uh, shoveling uh, my grandpa's walk, and I was listening to um, not only Rene Girard, um, Rene, well, I should say, there's a YouTuber called Essential Salts who does, you know, discussions on these philosophers. I really need to get into looking into these philosophers themselves, but he was talking about Rene Girard and how um, he argued that... Um, Nietzsche was wrong about his perspective of Christianity. Um, and it's all just very interesting. After that, I, I read a little, or not read, but I listened to a little bit of his uh, discussion about um, Hegel. There's a couple people, a couple YouTubers, that is, that are very, um, very um, important to me. I would say maybe even more than the thinkers to which they discuss, merely because they um, speak about the thinkers um, and that would be, one, essential salts. Two, um, you know, I'd have to say that, um, you know, Jordan Peterson was definitely an interesting beginning. Again, take him for what he is. He has a lot of very um, wise thought about psychology. Um, he was also, I guess you could say, very interested in Jung, Nietzsche, um, those people. Um, but also... Um, uh, uh, there was a new guy who goes by the name of the uh, modern hermeticist. He's speaking again about all these old ages of the past. And I just find them all, you know, so interesting. Uh, another guy who's kind of coming to me recently is Manly P. Hall. If you're interested in um, the occult, the esoteric, he's definitely a uh, very wise figure on that subject. But yeah, um you know, this podcast will be what it is, um, you know, and a lot of these, um, individual conversations I'm going to be talking about, uh, probably a lot of, uh, you know, some of my questions for philosophy, um, history, all that kind of stuff, maybe it's working off itself, uh, maybe an active form of thought where, you know, I can come to conclusions I haven't already come to, um, but, uh, you know, as well, 
I think I said this in the podcast that I would have posted that um, I'm I'm very appreciative of life, even in its sorrows. I I don't necessarily regret them. I believe that you know all of this is so so interesting. Um, uh, you know, and of all the knowledge that is kept secret and just behind the the vault of one's eyes, really just gets one going with, you know, potentially what alchemy basically stated was that there's a hidden method of 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 going about life that will you know make you able not only to live forever aka the philosopher's stone but um to you know find to to be able to manifest everything that you would ever desire to be able to um you know really you, you would be totally content you would be to your heart's desire and i guess that's in some sense, the aspiration of all religions, but, you know, just, just the, the thought that there are these secret organizations or secret ways of going about life that will render you to such ecstasy that, you know, usually, uh, probably like 99% of the world doesn't, or, and will never achieve merely because they don't know how to get there. It's just something interesting to me, maybe it's all false, maybe it's just some grand delusion, you know what I'm saying, but, uh, all of it's, all of it's so very, very interesting, that's all I can say, well, I think that this is a good first episode, I think this is where we can end this off, I kind of got all of my points across, um, kind of said everything that I wished to say in this first episode, at least, so, uh, We'll carry off with the next one soon. Hope you enjoyed. See you later.